Okay, we're finally making it to Fedora Silver Blue on the show. I'm pretty sure that no other distro has seen the amount of excitement and confusion as Fedora Silver Blue. I've heard a lot of people say that Silver Blue is the future of Linux on the desktop, but what does that mean exactly? Well, let's find out. Now I have to admit that I went into this episode with very high hopes because of all of the hype around Silver Blue. But the installer is just regular old Anaconda, the same installer that CentOS and Fedora use. There's absolutely nothing new or special about it, so let's just move right along to the desktop. And the desktop is, so far, just standard GNOME with the familiar welcome setup app. Once the user stuff is done, the actual welcome app appears, and did you know that this welcome app has little videos built into it? I've seen this app probably a dozen times and I have never noticed these videos, let alone watched them. It's the same old GNOME welcome app though, so it's uh, nothing special, silver, or blue about it. So yeah, we've made it to the silver blue desktop. Let's open up a terminal and see what's going on in there. We can see that a fresh install is about 3.9 gigabytes and Fedora with GNOME here is using 860 megabytes of memory at idle. The install size is quite small, but the memory usage is on par with a GNOME desktop. HDOP isn't installed by default, but you can install it with OS Tree, and I'll talk more about that and how impressed I am with it shortly. In regular old top, we see 215 tasks and 212 threads. The 200 and something threads is pretty normal for GNOME, but over 200 tasks at idle? seems abnormally high. Remember that Clear Linux, which also ran vanilla GNOME, had only 96 tasks at idle. So yeah, GNOME. We're looking at yet another GNOME desktop here. If you've seen the Fedora 32 episode, this is basically the same thing. It's GNOME 3.36.1. It even has all of the same backgrounds. How could they not include a special background for Silverblue? I don't really know what else to show here on the desktop. We've already seen this, you know, like across different distros. So let's just hop on over the applications. The selection is similar to Fedora, but let's talk about the stupid map app again. If you remember from the Fedora episode, this app didn't work. And guess what? It doesn't work here either. Now, if Silverblue is a developer focused distro, why in the hell is no maps pre-installed anyway? I mean, if you're going to use a map for your development, like why would you use no maps? And there's no media player pre-installed, but they managed to slip in GNOME apps into the default package selection? Like, why? Could a contributor maybe leave a comment and explain this logic? I'm completely baffled by it. So let's take this and segue into GNOME software for a moment. Since most of the apps you would install on Silverblue or Flatpaks, you'd probably get them with GNOME software. Unfortunately, GNOME software on Silverblue is a train wreck. When I first opened it, it gave me this warning that says, unable to install English as not supported. So that's a good sign. And it just hung here. It never stopped loading the Flatpak metadata, whatever that is supposed to mean. Later, after a reboot, I opened it again and it told me that an update had been installed, but it was unable to install the third party update or repo or something. So maybe like an actual update or upgrade or whatever went bad and corrupted things. I'm not really sure. And I never got past this part. When I searched for apps in GNOME software and went to categories or whatever, either nothing showed or it showed two, maybe three totally unrelated apps. Like if I went to audio, it showed like text editors or something. It was just a mess. There's posts about this very same thing on the Silver Blue discourse, like the forums. So this is a seemingly known issue. I've never had a great experience with GNOME software, but this really takes the cake. So moving along to the external device test, Silverblue has the standard Fedora limitations. So that means no EXFAT support and no codec support out of the box. Weirdly though, the archive manager was able to open that RAR file as well as all of the other archives. I installed VLC through Flathub through the CLI and all of the media files worked just fine. The Etcher app image worked good, but the Caden Live app image complained about some obscure missing lib so it wouldn't open. I installed OBS through Flatpak and it worked good, but unfortunately NVIDIA drivers are more than just a hassle to install on Silverblue, so we won't be doing that. Yet. I've seen a couple people in live streams and in comments saying that installing NVIDIA drivers on Silverblue is super easy now, but all the information I found about it makes it look like a serious pain in the ass, like almost as bad as Clear Linux. So instead of trying to install them here where I can edit out all the bad stuff, we're going to do it live on the Encore episode so that we all can see it happen and see how easy it is. So jumping ahead to the networking section, I was surprised at how everything just worked. DLNA sharing, direct connections, my printer, and Bluetooth controller 
all worked without a hitch, no issues, no nothing. Hooray! And now it's time for the benchmark segment. Since there's no NVIDIA drivers here, I'm going to compare Silverblue and Clear Linux because they're both using the open source NVIDIA driver and they're similar enough. We're looking at Xenotic here. Silverblue did about the same as Clear Linux with the LTS kernel, but when the native kernel is tossed into the mix, we can see that Clear Linux pulled ahead by a good amount. And in the CPU department, Clear Linux actually bested Silverblue by a lot. In both tests, single and multi-core. So who is Fedora Silverblue aimed at exactly? To be honest, I don't know, and after this video, I am still unsure. Funnily enough, I'm pretty sure I said something very similar about Fedora in the Fedora 32 episode. But it's true. Who the heck does this appeal to? Remember I mentioned the OS tree thing at the beginning of the episode? Well, look at this. Here's a user story for you. As a developer, I want to install HTOP so that I can see my system resources real time from a terminal without relying on a heavy GUI based monitor or having to parse a verbose monitor like top. That's it. That's all I want to do. That is my user story. On Silverblue, you have to open up a terminal and install it with OS tree, which is a git like uh, thing. So you tell OS tree to install it. It checks it out and does very git like things. And this took about two minutes on the distro delves PC to finish. And at the end, when HTOP is done installing, I have to reboot to use it. Yes, you heard right. I have to reboot my entire computer to use HTOP. There might be a way around this, but if there is, it's not clear. And it says right there, reboot to use it. If you're running Arch, why don't you open up a terminal and tell us in the comments how long it takes for you to install and set up HTOP. And can you run HTOP right after you install it? And fans of Silverblue might be screaming, oh my god, EG, you're missing the entire point. And yes, I know that there are benefits to using OS tree, but I just don't buy it. I also don't buy the immutable file system thing either. Of my 12 plus years as a software developer, mostly in infrastructure and DevOps, I've hosed up my root file system one time because of a bad recursive chmod and I was able to recover it with ease using Snapper on OpenSUSE. If you're a developer and you somehow find yourself constantly wrecking your file system and you think that immutability is the answer, you might want to question your own development practices. I'm not trying to be rude here, but to say that Silverblue is the future of the Linux desktop is pompous to say the least. There's nothing here that I'm impressed with, and the parts that I would expect to work flawlessly on a containerized Linux distro don't even work. GNOME software was a mess, no maps didn't work, like how is this happening? I'd love to test out Silverblue in a future episode down the road to see if it's improved, but the way I see it right now, Silverblue is just a freaking awesome and possibly one of the, if not the best, Linux distros ever. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves and stay tuned for the livestream Encore episode where we're going to be trying to install those pesky NVIDIA drivers live. I appreciate all your support and thanks for watching.